In this video, we'll be looking at uh, verse 3 of Daniel 11. Um, in the last video, I touched on the the three kings that, that signed three decrees that became one, giving the Israelites freedom to go back to Jerusalem to um, rebuild the, the sanctuary and eventually re-establish their uh, economy, which was based upon the sanctuary and its services. They were Cyrus, and after him, Darius II, his and in 457, the third decree which completed the, the, um, the, the, it was kind of like the icing on the cake of, of what the um, Israelites needed to go back and to rebuild and to restore um, that which God had once established where the nation was concerned. Um, the third decree signed in the seventh year of our tax Xerxes, that was 457. BC, and if you read through the book of Ezra, you'll see all of the decrees, the three decrees described in different portions of, of, of the book. I think in verse 1 of chapter 1, you've got a reference to uh, the decree signed by Cyrus. All three decrees are described in Ezra 6 and verse 14. So if you read through the book of Ezra, you'll see contained therein information relating to the decrees signed by the three um, Persian kings. We're on verse 3 now. Um, in verse 2, we're introduced to the, the kingdom of Grisha. Remember, in Daniel 2, you've got um, the empires depicted, different empires that rise and fall. They're depicted using metals. Um, the vision given to Nebuchadnezzar in his dream, head of gold, chest and arms of silver, belly and fries of, of, pies of, of brass, and so on and so forth. Each metal representing a kingdom. Chapter 7, Daniel has a vision. Instead of metals being used, um, animals are used. Each animal representing um, a kingdom that corresponds with the metals of Daniel 2. Always remember Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece. Um, Rome has two phases, pagan and then papal. In chapter 2 you've got a description of God's kingdom being set up which lasts forever. Chapter 7 describes a judgment. And in chapter 8 you've got um, beasts used. But Babylon is, is to a certain degree null and void at that point. So the sequence starts with Middle Persia, the ram-like beast. And then instead of a judgment described in chapter 8, you've got um, the cleansing of the sanctuary, which we put together with the judgment to better understand how the judgment works, <coughs> Excuse me, and so on and so forth. In chapter 11, as discussed in the introductory video, um, Gabriel doesn't use symbols. Daniel's in a vision, but Gabriel isn't going to use symbols. Daniel's, da Daniel doesn't see metals or, or beasts. Gabriel is basically in front of Daniel, and he describes um, prophetic events, historical events that will... Um, be fulfilled in their order but he uses he basically describes people so we're on verse verse 3 chapter 2 or rather verse 2 of chapter 11 introduces us to the fact that a king rises up that Xerxes he stirs all against the realm of Grisha basically amasses a massive army to go into Grisha and he's, de he's defeated eventually at Salamis having gained a victory at um, Thermopylae and in verse 3 now um, some years after um, Xerxes, a mighty king shall stand up, and that mighty king corresponds with the first horn of the he-goat in chapter 8 of Daniel, and that's basically the first king to kind of unite the Grecian um, realm, because it was kind of splintered at first, and that's basically, it's, it's Alexander the Great, he begins to reign in 536, uh, no sorry, 336 BC, and he is the mighty king described in um, verse 3. A mighty king shall stand up. That mighty king is Alexander the Great. Basically what Alexander does, he begins to reign in 336. He sets out on a campaign against um, Persia, first of all. Has three major battles against them. I'm not going to go into detail. But eventually he defeats them at, I believe, Arbella, a place called Arbella, in 331 um, BC and basically there Persia goes off the scene and the Grecian Empire begins to hold sway. So in Daniel 2 we're down to the belly and fires of brass. In Daniel 7 we're down to the leopard-like beasts with the wing, the leopard-like beast rather, with the wings and the foreheads. And we're down to the he-goat, the rough goat of Daniel chapter um, 8. So you can see how the, the prophecies correspond one with another. You have to overlay them on each other and have, you'll have then a, a detailed picture of what's going on. He does according to his will. He has great dominion and does according to his will. 
basically he conquers as no other leader before him at least in the western world and no one can stand before him the he goat described in um, chapter 8 which represents Grisha under the leadership of Alexander it says its feet touching up the ground so swift were the conquests of this great general or this general who was described as great and it does according to his will he, he, no man can argue with him every battle that he, he, he fights he wins and so verse 3 is basically talking about Alexander uh, the Great. Uh, verse 4, we'll go into in the next video, it will describe his, his basically, verse 3 describes his fall, his, um, or rather his rise, and verse 4 will describe his fall, and we'll go into the history and how that plays out. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the videos as, as, as that are posted thus far on Daniel 11. Um, please comment in the um, section below, let me know if you've got any questions, um, or if you've got any information that I may have missed. And let me know if they're clear and easy enough to understand. Please pray for me as I pray for um, you.